Welcome back. This is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. We're going to continue on the journey of neural inflammation, and today we're going to talk about exercise. How does exercise impact neural inflammation? How can exercise improve it or can be detrimental? So let's go into it. When we look at exercise, we look at different types of hormone release based on what the exercise can produce, right? Things like growth factor, opiates, uh, nitric oxide, BDNF is brain-derived uh, neurotropic factors, insulin re uh, receptor sensitivity, immune enhancements, oxidative stress, right? So let's go into this. Growth hormones. When you have light to maybe moderate exercise, like you go walking every day for three miles, right? In terms of growth hormones, there's very minimal impact right? There's nothing, almost. You need to do high intensity. If you do high intensity exercises, it will increase it significantly, your growth hormones. And why is that important? Because growth hormones help you heal, right? The whole anti-aging movements will give you growth hormones. Opioid response. So things like um, mood enhancing, mood enhancing um, um, hormones from your body that can be produced, right? Helps you in terms of uh, feeling better overall and reducing inflammation. Like light to moderate exercise has very minimal impact, right? And opioids also help decrease pain. If you have high intensity exercises, it increases it significantly. Okay? Nitric oxide. Uh, in particular, we're talking about neuronal, like EONOS and uh, endothelial. Right? These nitric oxide systems are very important for vasodilation of your arteries and protective and so forth. So nitric oxide will increase a little bit with light exercise, maybe one or two arrows there, but it will increase significantly with high intensity exercises. Brain derived uh, neurotropic factors. Light exercise a little bit and then high intensity a lot. This is important for neuroconnectivity and healing of the nervous system. So it's very important to improve uh, brain-derived neurotropic factors, okay? Insulin resistance or insulin receptor sensitivity. Uh, diabetes or insulin resistance is pretty rampant uh, in the United States because of our diet, right? We have the SAD diet, which is the standard American diet, hot dogs, hamburgers, pizza, cereal for breakfast, and so forth. So, we, in order to improve insulin sensitivity to prevent insulin resistance or diabetes, obviously light exercise will be beneficial, but high intensity exercise is where you really push your body and build muscle mass, is where insulin receptor sensitivity will increase. So it's better for diabetes and those types of things. It also impacts, obviously, neural inflammation. Immune enhancements. Light exercise a little bit, high intensity a lot. Right? So in general, high intensity exercises tend to be better. Now, given that you have good knees and hips and you don't have a lot of pain in these joints and so forth, I would prefer high intensity exercises over walking. However, in terms of oxidative stress, what can create oxidative stress to our body? Right? Moderate exercise can increase oxidative stress, but your body should be able to recover. If you are a person who's not doing well, who has neuroinflammation, who has cognitive difficulty, who has poor uh, fuel for delivery, it, high intensity exercises can actually make the oxidative stress worse. So oxidation will increase with high intensity exercises. So it's very important to find the right balance between exercise that's appropriate and too much exercise. So high intensity exercise is not for everyone, but in general, it increases all the good hormones and decreases neuroinflammation. So I'm gonna give you an example of oxidative stress. So the people who train or overtrain, right? They're doing triathlons, they're swimming, the swim, the run, and the long bike. Those people put a lot of oxidative stress into their body, right? And sometimes they can handle it for a period of time, but if they continue on that road without recovery, oxidative stress will actually break down their body. So it's important to 
uh, rest, recoup before you go into higher intensive, intensive training. So you have to know your brain's capacity. Do I have neural inflammation at all, right? And if we do, how do we improve these good hormones and reduce oxidative stress? Is it light exercise or high intensity exercises? Which would be better for you? Now, it should be individualized, right? In general terms, high intensity would be best. However, you have to know your capacity. Can my brain handle the amount of exercise that I can actually do? Because if you exercise and you can't get up the next morning, or your brain fog is worse, or your cognitive difficulty gets worse after high intensity, that's not for you, right? You have to build up to it. So it's very important for that. So exercise is a critical factor for reducing neural inflammation, okay? My name is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. And we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.